afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we are in Perth Amboy, and we are going to be checking out the allegedly haunted uh, proprietary house. First, we're going to start off where all good ghost hunting starts, and that's at the public library. And we're going to go inside and take a look and check out their local history collection um, and see if they have information on the prop house. Okay, so let's see what we got. The knowledge. So we're with the. Can you tell me what your name is again? Velma Novak. And she. Uh, how did you put it? I'm involved with local history. I'll be organizing the local history department. So, and we're going to take a look at their local history collection, um, which is in the basement, if I understand. It's, in the, okay. it's a work in progress. Okay. So, looking out this way, I want to show you this very interesting lift. This is a, a dumb way where we bring the books and you know different supplies up and down by using this. It's from the Sedgwick Machine Works in Poughkeepsie, New York. Started wow. in the 17th century. 17th century. Wow. I believe so, yeah. So I think this is really fascinating. We love this. This is cool. And now it it houses creamer. Yeah, right, right now it does. Yeah, magazine. All right, and here's our stairs, marble staircase. This is our secret passage, but we're not uh, using this as a egress for the public. So we're slowly trying to create a local history department. Mm -hmm. And right now, these files are indexed. So this isn't open to the public, but if someone asks for something for local history, we could go to the index and put some wow. information. It's very interesting. Here's this gentleman that's staring at me from the there, corner. This is a Carnegie Library. It opened in this library opened in 1903, and there's our benefactor in the Carnegie. Okay, now so the wonderful wow. Wow. items here. So these are newspapers that go back yeah. to Look 1898. 1897. So, do you know or have inf any information on the the prop house? Um, it was founded by the proprietors and built for the royal governor. There were several royal governors mm -hmm. that lived in the prop house. And the last one was William Franklin, who was Benjamin Franklin's illegitimate son. <laughs> After the uh, revolution. Several, there were several other owners, but there was one uh, that turned it into a resort. It was one of the first resorts in the United States. At that time, Perth Amboy had spas, they had mineral baths, wow. wealthy people came in from New York, the Astors had property here. Mm -hmm. The War of 1812 happened, and it destroyed the business. People, you know, were right on the coast of British battleships yeah. are out there. <clears throat> Dodging cannonballs isn't something you, you want to get involved with when you're on vacation. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do that. It's not relaxing anymore. <laughs> so uh, after that, uh, and a, a fellow named John Ratoon, who was also a mayor of Perth Amboy, bought the place. He sold it to a Matthias Bruin, who was a very wealthy merchant, one of the wealthiest people in the United States. After um, this Bruin family owned it, it was given over to the Methodist Church and called the Westminster House, and that was a, uh, a home for retired Presbyterian ministers. And after that, it became a rooming house, and it fell into real into disrepair. Okay. And then the state took it over, I think sometime in the 60s. Now it's a thriving museum. Okay. This is th this is brochure from when it was the home for the uh, Presby retired Presbyterian ministers. This is how it looked when it was a resort. What's this? Okay. And this you could see how it... See, the frontage of Prop House was once High Street. This is... Uh, obviously, it's after they cut the property after they subdivided oh, so the did, property. Yeah. So, and, and it doesn't look like this now hmm. either. But you could see, uh, get an idea of one of its iterations. Traveling makes you own the world. I'm a traveling man. I own the world. But if I 
cross your path I'd give it all up I'd give the world to a girl like you <clears throat> Okay, I can see it ahead building. Um, it's been through a lot of wars. Um, Revolutionary War, War of 1812. It's been burned. It's a lot of different owners. It's been a boarding house. It's been a flop house. It's been lots of things. Um, <laughs> that there's that second story door right now. I used to walk out onto a patio or something. Now it's just a suicide door. So between the neighbors Halloween decorations, uh and this kind of windy overcast day and the sounds of the birds it's it's pretty creepy even at four o'clock in the afternoon on the left here that's an addition that was added later Take a walk up to the front door. Please knock loudly, the governor may be sleeping. You know what? No thanks. Don't don't want to knock. Um So having seen a lot of uh, Revolutionary War action, um, um, no surprise that one of the rumored ghosts is a Revolutionary War soldier. Um, there's also rumors of a woman in white, uh, always seems to be a woman in white, um, or a boy in blue, it's been seen in the windows. So let's see what we can see here. It's pretty cool. It's getting close to uh, rush hour here, um, so probably too much traffic on the street right now for us to... Uh, see any ghosts or anything. So we're going to start heading back because uh, it looks like it's about to rain. Um, so I'm going to head back to the library and um, yeah. So thanks for checking in. Um, <laughs>